I had an idea to capture a Milky Way landscape in an hourglass, and it turned out way better than I could have imagined. But to understand how I got here, we have to hit that rewind button. Nope, not that one, this one, and go all the way back to the beginning. Back before this channel even ever existed. It was April 2020. Everyone was stocking up on everything. Toilet paper was in short supply, and so was the patience of everyone who had to use a bathroom. Meanwhile, I had no shortage of time at home and was busying myself with many different things, one of which was looking at astrophotos online, and one in particular caught my eye. Someone captured the Milky Way in a lens ball. Now if you don't know, lens balls are crystal spheres you can use as fisheye lenses. They let you capture large areas of landscape in a small area of your photo, but they flip the scene. Now sure, you can imitate this effect in Photoshop, but to do it for real? Well, I had to try but make it different. My mind started racing with ideas. I figured that if I could use a glass container, fill it with water, it would have the same effect as a lens ball. In fact, I even used some glasses from my kitchen cupboard, filled them with water, and took these photos, which I thought were pretty cool. Then it finally hit me. I could use an hourglass. It had the perfect shape and would do the trick. But I quickly forgot about this. Time passed and the Milky Way core set. May, 2021. I was out shopping and something caught my eye. It was an hourglass. Not only that, it was at discount price. My mind thought back to the previous year, the time at home, the things I busied myself with, and how could I forget? The toilet paper. I realized I had unfinished business, so I bought that hourglass as quick as possible. I guess you could say it was the right time. Which brings us to the next part of the story. Wow, time really does fly. Come on. Keep that story moving. We need that viewer retention. If you're following along at home, I used a flathead screwdriver to remove the hourglass from its encasement. Be really careful if you're going to do this because these break easily. After you're done removing the hourglass, remove the foam cap and remove this piece of tape. I've noticed most hourglasses are built this way and I would know. I had to buy two of them for this project because I accidentally broke the one while filming this video. Once you're done with that alternate timeline, come back to this one and empty that sand. Then fill the hourglass with purified water so it's clear. This was a little bit difficult, so you can probably use a faucet instead. Just make sure there's no dirt in the water. I also used a straw to push the water from the top of the hourglass through the neck and to the bottom. Top it off with some water and you've got your finished hourglass. So go ahead, breathe in that sweet smell of success. Now for my photos, I used a Rebel T7i and a Samyang 14mm f2.8. This lens is perfect for Milky Way photos because of its wide field of view, but it also stops down to f2.8, which makes it great for untracked photos. I also used two tripods, one for the hourglass and one for the camera. The key to setting this up is getting the minimum focus distance right, so place the camera as close to the hourglass as possible while maintaining focus. Now notice that the bottom half of the hourglass is closer to the lens than the top, which means this half of the hourglass requires a different focus than this half, so split the difference and try to focus on the area between them. I also took a piece of clear tape and put it over top of the hole to keep the water from spilling out. Once I had that all set up, I took a test shot, and I was actually really impressed with the results. The most important thing about framing your shot is knowing the effect that water has on light. As you move your camera to the left, the trees in the hourglass will move right. And as you move your camera to the right, the trees in the hourglass will move left. If you want to capture objects that are higher in the sky, you have to lower the angle of your camera beneath the hourglass. Now I like trees as much as the next guy, but I wanted to find a cooler landscape for my Milky Way photo, and I found this book. The lighthouse on the front of this book had potential, and I thought to myself that this just might work. This is the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse in North Carolina, and it is a great place to shoot Milky Way photos, not only because of the lighthouse, but because you're shooting out towards the ocean, which means there's a lot less light pollution. Now, the best part about this national park is it's open 24 hours, so you're allowed to shoot photos here during the nighttime. Because it's the end of August and we're about one week removed from the new moon, I'll have a very limited time window for actually finishing this project, which thankfully is all I'll need because the Milky Way appears right here on this side of the lighthouse. Oh, and if you're going during the summer, wear long sleeves and use bug spray because the bugs are relentless. As you prep your setup for the night, remember, we want the stars inside of the hourglass to be as pinpoint as possible. And I actually use the lighthouse lamp to achieve focus in my camera live view. The settings I use for my final photo are 16 second exposures at f2.8, and ISO 3200. Processing the final hourglass photo was actually very time consuming. 
And that's because I had to independently process the background stars, the hourglass stars, and the lighthouse. So, after 16 months of waiting, 10 hours of driving, and one night of imaging, I finally did it. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more content like this.